Hit Film Sensei here. Today, in this video, we are going to continue the discussion from last week on how to rig up your X Wing fighter. All right, this week I am working in HitFilm Pro version 6.071.22, etc., and so on. And so this is going to give us some better choices and some easier things to do, okay? I had a couple of questions I'm going to address first last week. First of all, the first question that came about was, hey, you know, where'd you get that Death Star? I, don't, I didn't see you do anything with Death Star. I went online. I searched for it. I searched for Death Star PNG, and I found one that I liked, and I dropped it right into my project. It was that simple, and you can do the same thing. Okay. Um, the second big question that I got was, wait a minute, I don't remember this flare being here. What's up with that? Well, that's true. I didn't actually show how I added that. So what I did was I added a plane, a black plane, and um, I uh, set the blend mode to add, and then I added a, um, a light flare effect, which I changed to anamorphic halo, but it could be any light flare you want. And then I added a 360 video viewer layer only effect, and uh, that was it. Okay, you can make it whatever you want. I mean, you can leave it as the as the original flare, okay? But that flare will interact with the um, you know, the 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 camera as it moves. Uh and I I just liked the anamorphic halo. I thought that looked really cool. And so I left it with that. So that's how I added that. I add that to almost all of my shots just to sort of have a little bit of extra you know, environmental ambiance for the shot, okay? All right, let's talk about a couple of things here. Now that we have version 6 of HitFilm Pro, there's a new feature. So before, when I did the um, these control points, you can see that I had two sliders, uh, and those sliders I aligned the wings towards, and that's how I was able to animate the wings with one swift motion. Well, guess what? We don't have to do that anymore because version 6 gives us a really nice thing. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get rid of the two sliders first, okay? The wing control right and wing control left, delete. Now, the problem is, is that if I go to the top view, you may recall from last week that when I did that, I had to realign. So the wings are now out of alignment. Okay. So I'm going to just undo that. that. That should be zero. And this should be zero. And the bottom line is, is that I did that last week to make the alignment correct. Uh, and now, you know, you won't have to do that. So you'll get to the point where you want to start animating the wings. Okay. And it's actually very easy to do. All you're going to do is you're going to take either wing, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to add a behavior to it. This is new to version 6. You're going to insert a behavior effect, and that will be rotate by layer. Okay? You're going to open that up, and you're going to reference the other wing layer. And under the Z rotation, you will make that negative 100%, which means that if I rotate the left bottom right top wing in a positive fashion then the right bottom left top wing will rotate in a negative fashion because it's a negative point so i can go from zero and i'm going to guess about 20 is the number uh and i'm saying that because as i kind of look at the wing up real close you can see that it's just barely on the edge so i think 20 degrees is the number that we were looking for um, but you can rotate that to whatever you think is acceptable. I think that's probably about right. So in this case, I may get to about, oh, you know, two and a half seconds. And it's zero. And keep framing and then move forward to, say, three and a half seconds. And now it's 20. And it's that simple. I'm going to make those smooth. And so now I have this situation where the wings open. And it was much, much, much easier to rig up. So uh, that's the way you want to do that if you're in HitFilm Pro version 6. Otherwise, if you're in a previous version, then you'll want to stick with the way that I did it last week. Next question. 
Can I make the windows of my X-Wing fighter more opaque or translucent? And the answer is yes. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. One is you can re-import the entire model with only the windows visible and then just adjust the opacity of the windows before you bring it in. The other way you can do it is the way I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to just take the whole fighter and I am going to duplicate it. And I'm going to rename the duplicate Windows. Okay. And under the Windows, I am going to just scale out all parts of the model except the Windows. So if I were to remove or make the fighter actually itself invisible for a second, and I open up the body of the X Wing and make the scale zero, then the body's gone, right? If I then do that to all the wings, now all the wings are gone and all you have left is the windows, okay? What I would then do is go ahead and move the windows above the fighter, but then in the controls panel under layer properties, go ahead and reference the X fighter as your depth source so that there's proper occlusion, all right? Now the only other problem is, and let me... Uh, just move this around a little bit so you can see what I'm saying here is there you can see the windows but the windows on the original model are still visible so what you would do is you would go in and under windows scale of the original model windows scale them out to zero okay so now they're invisible you go wait the windows still aren't um, opaque yeah what I do is under the windows world transform I'm just going to adjust the opacity of those and there they are. So that's how you, and you might, you might set that to 40% opacity or whatever, you know, what you thought would work well for your particular, um, uh, you know, project, but you can actually sort of see through those windows there. All right. Last thing we're going to talk about adding motion blurs. Now this shot moves so slowly being a 12 second long pan that there wasn't really much motion blur in it naturally. So I didn't worry about it. However, uh, if that was a quicker shot, then it would look kind of unrealistic. So for example, let's say that instead of being 12 seconds, this entire shot took place over um, five seconds. Okay. And in fact, I went in and changed the properties to five seconds. Okay, so now this is moving very quickly. Oh, you know what? The wing is actually passing through the camera. Let me just real quickly raise the camera just 100 pixels or so, just high enough that it's sort of, you know, Oh, yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, but the bottom line is is that there would be a lot of motion blur on a shot like this, and because there isn't, it looks kind of fake, okay? So it's real simple. All you have to do is just grab everything and add motion blurs to everything that can be motion blurred, and it looks really cool, right? Except that there's a problem, and the problem is, look at that motion blur. looks lovely, doesn't it? really does. But the problem is, and even you'll notice that the death, you know, this is motion blurring. That looks so the Death Star is motion blurring. Everything is motion blurring. Looks really good. But what happened to our engine glows? Well, the engine glows are affected by the motion blur. And you say, well, why is that? And the answer is, I have no idea. I really don't. Uh, and when I don't know something, I just admit I have no idea. But I do know how to fix it. So that's what matters, I guess. First thing is I'm going to turn off the engine motion blur on the engine glows. Okay. We still don't have any engine glows. All right. That's fine, though, because what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to duplicate my X-Wing fighter object. Okay. And the object that is the original, the one that the engines are referencing, I'm going to remove the motion blur on. And there it is. Okay. But the problem is, is that that's covering the motion blurred version that's okay because if i turn it and make it invisible if i turn it off the engines are still referencing it even though it's not there but yet i have the motion blur see so you definitely want to turn it off because otherwise it, it kind of defeats the purpose of adding the motion blur so basically i just have a duplicate fighter that is being motion blurred and then the original one gets uh, made invisible, but the layer is still there. You see what I mean? 
Uh, and that's it. That's how you would add motion blur to your shot. And when you're all done, it sort of looks like this. All right. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from HitFilm Sensei, consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday and Monday, and thanks for your support.